I am a self-taught UI designer, no code designer, product designer, whatever you want to call it. I'm a self-taught UI UX designer. I went to school for industrial design, so the designing of things like iPhones and coffee machines, whatever. So I'm familiar with the process of design, but the fundamentals of digital design were completely new to me. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know on how to get started on becoming a no code designer like myself. I'm going to teach you guys some quick ways to get ahead so you guys don't have to struggle through it like I did. Now, before we get started in this video, I'm going to use the words UI. UX, product design, no code, quite often. And it's important that you know some of these meanings or some of these definitions. So there's UI and UX design. So UI design, for example, would be the design of the buttons on the actual remote. Let's say this remote, for example, right? UI would be like the design of the actual buttons on this remote, right? Like how does the actual button lay in here? How does the icon show? What color? Things like that, right? That's pretty obvious. And then UX would be more about like, okay, this button is this far from here because the user's thumb is on average gonna be about this big, right? That's a pretty crude example and pretty basic, but that's pretty much the idea behind it. UI is the interface and UX is the experience. So the most important part of any design system is gonna be the experience. If your experience isn't good or isn't pleasant for the end user or for the, for the user that's gonna actually end up buying your product or creating an account with your software, whatever it is, then it doesn't matter how pretty all the icons are in the first place. Now this is a little controversial because UI UX is essentially the same thing. So if you're creating a UI, it must be good in the sense of the UX. And if you're creating a good UX, then also the UI must be good. So they're essentially the same exact thing. However, there are job roles for UI only and also for UX only, but just so you can kind of wrap your head around those two terms. And before we get started, guys, any link or any website that I'm gonna mention in this video, I'll leave in the description so you guys have a quick access to it. Now let's get right back into the video. Now the next thing that is extremely important when you're starting out your career is actually developing a good eye for UI and UX. Now this one will come with time. As you go on through your career, you'll sort of realize what looks good, what doesn't look good, what works, what doesn't work. And a big part of that is actually knowing what would work and what is actually buildable, right? What can developers or no-code developers actually build with the tools that they have, such as their software, whether it's Webflow, whether it's Editor X, Squarespace, whatever it is, right? As much as creativity is powerful and it's it's amazing to go out and design outside the box, sometimes your design isn't valid for the person who's actually going to build your product or actually build the page that you designed. A big player in this is actually a lot of designs in sites like Dribbble and Behance because although, again, they use their full creativity, they create amazing animations, amazing designs, it's not fully buildable. And I'll paste a few examples up here so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. But a lot of the times you actually need to be mindful about the things that are actually doable. So one way to to start to get a good eye for these websites and for these apps is just to simply start copying them. Now, don't release these copies as your own work. That's obviously not valid and it's not legal. But one thing that you should do, and one thing I have covered in a previous video, if you guys want to go watch that up there, is actually just take a screenshot of a landing page or a site that you really like, plug it into Figma, and then try to actually copy that design bit by bit. Now, I actually just did this recently with a crypto page or a crypto landing page. You guys can actually watch me go do that right there. So as you start imitating these pages and these designs, you'll start to notice what works, what doesn't work, why the spacing is so far up, so far down, why one text is bigger than another, why one color works, why one doesn't. And it's a very brute way of learning these fundamentals, but it's a very important way as well. You can almost imagine it as like when you first started drawing and you started putting things on top of other images and you just trace them over, right? You start learning why the curve works so well, why the shading doesn't here, there, here and there. So that's an example for you guys to understand why it's so important to start imitating the designs that you guys really appreciate. Now, once you get those basics down and once you understand the fundamentals and you've started copying some designs and you understand why things work and things don't, I would say start investing in yourself. Start actually going after this dream that you have. Start actually enjoying the process. And a lot of that comes with getting the right software, having the right tools to really be proficient at no code or at design or web development in general. Now, a few of the most essential tools that I work with really quickly is Figma. Do not use Photoshop. Do not use Illustrator to craft your UI pages or your your web development pages. Don't use any sort of pixel programs, right? Like Photoshop, don't use any of that. Use Figma, Sketch, or Adobe XD. Those are three main players. And I would recommend Figma because that's just the one I use. It's the one I enjoy the most and it's best for collaboration if you're going into this into this world. Next will be Webflow. You guys already know that I love Webflow. They're my favorite web development tool. I use them for everything and especially in the no-code world, they're extremely important and they're going to be the big
biggest one in the future, in my opinion. So make sure that you learn Webflow because it's an extremely valuable tool. Next one is Zapier. If you don't know what Zapier is, it's also extremely important for no code. It basically allows different sites to talk to each other and it lets you automate processes like, okay, one person signs up, send them an email to thank them, right? That's a very basic example. Then you're also gonna want to learn MemberStack, which allows users to sign up and create accounts through your Webflow pages. Now, I know Webflow is creating a sort of user creation flow, but it hasn't happened yet, so learn member stack. Next are some different ones that aren't really no code, but just web design in general. Unsplash is the best page for free stock imagery. Dribble and Lapa Ninja are the best websites for inspiration. Now take it with a grain of salt because a lot of times places like Dribble aren't fully working websites, right? And last on my tools that's most important, I use Bonsai for all my invoices, for all my contracts. Contracts are extremely important. I've literally created an entire playlist just on Hello Bonsai, if you guys wanna go ahead and check that one out. Next up on investing in yourself is gonna be courses. Courses are also extremely important. It'll be the fastest way for you to learn zero to 100. And if you guys want a really cheap and really easy to learn UX course, I recommend this one Skillshare course for UX. It's by Google UX Manager, so you know that it's reputable and it's a, it's a great course. So guys, I really recommend that one. But if you guys wanna spend some more money, some more investment capital on yourself, then I do recommend you you go with Flux. If you guys know Flux, they're a main player in the UI UX world on YouTube and also in the course world, I guess. So Flux has a few different courses. I've actually also created a review on one of their courses, the Six Figure Freelancer, but that's not necessarily for UI UX. They have a few different courses like the Web Design Pro and also the Webflow Masterclass. So if you wanna invest a couple hundred dollars in those courses, then again, link is in the description. I extremely recommend these courses. They're incredible. They have a whole community around them. So, so you know that you're not gonna be alone when you're actually learning through it and you're, you're going through the course itself. And someone like Rand Segal is just a stand-up guy, so I really recommend these type of courses. But again, if you're not ready to spend those couple hundred dollars, which is completely fine, it's a lot of money, not everyone has access to that sort of capital, I recommend that you guys go with the Skillshare course. It'll get you 90% of the way there as well. Okay, after you've invested in yourself, after you've gotten all the software and all the tools and you've designed a couple of basic sites, the next thing that you need to do in your career is going to be get feedback on your designs. This is maybe the most important part of the entire video. You need to get feedback on everything that you're doing because if you don't get feedback and all you do is essentially talk to yourself and hmm, I think this is a good design, I don't think so, I don't think this, I don't think that, get feedback from people that are great in design and sort of established designers if you know any. And if not, then I recommend that you go to Facebook groups, you go to Reddit groups, because those groups will be full of people just like yourself looking to get feedback and looking to get help on their designs. Now this can sort of be detrimental sometimes. It's almost like the blind leading the blind because if you don't know what's what works and what doesn't, you're sort of getting feedback from each other, then maybe it's not the best, right? So the best case here would be find someone that knows web design and knows no code and try to show them your website, try to show them your designs. So after you've gotten feedback from your Facebook groups or your dribble, whatever it is, then it's time to get your first official client. There's two different ways to go around this. One of them is the job route and then the other one is the freelance route. Now I am well versed in the freelance route. I'm not so well versed in the go get a job sort of route. So I recommend you learn from Femke on her YouTube channel. If you want to go down that route, she's an amazing designer and she's worked at companies such as Uber and Wealthsimple. So I really recommend that you guys go ahead and check out her channel. I'll leave it linked. And then if you want to go more of the freelance route, right, getting clients and sort of having your own little business and maybe outsourcing and kind of having this little word around yourself, then I recommend again, the Flux channel. They're an amazing channel or actually myself. I have many videos on freelancing and web development. So go ahead and watch those as well. So before getting your first job, regardless if it's at a company or just freelancing, you need to build a portfolio. Now to build a portfolio, I say that you need at least one to two projects. If you only have one, one, then it better be an amazing portfolio or an amazing project. But really what you want here is quality over quantity. It's fine if you don't have 15 projects. Most of the time people aren't gonna look at them anyways. So one to three is really what I recommend most of the time. Now, if you're creating this portfolio and you don't have any real clients yet, obviously, then I recommend that you use something like fakebriefs.com. Create a fake brief for yourself, get a fake client, a fake company, a fake purpose of the company, and this, 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 and that. And you sort of craft this fake website. And with this fake website, it sort of acts as a case study. And with this case study, you can sort of start to show clients or start to show businesses that, okay, this person knows how to create a Webflow site, they know how to create Figma files, a wireframe, a this, a this, a this, and that. And that's sort of the fastest way to go about it. So when you're ready and you have these first few projects, then I recommend if you don't know anyone near you that actually needs a project and you don't know them in person, then I recommend that you use something like Upwork. Now Upwork is amazing for freelancers. I used to use it myself. I have my own, obviously, my own thoughts about Upwork. I made a video on it as well. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check that one out. But Upwork is great if you're just starting to freelance and you wanna get a first few clients, it's an amazing 
amazing platform for you to sort of understand what client wants, what a client needs, and how to sort of go through those conversations. But there you have it, guys. If you guys want to know anything else, then leave a question down below and I will answer it. If you guys want to know more about freelancing, I actually made a freelancing playlist a little while ago. So go ahead and watch that over there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.